possibly an isolated tornado and large hail for West Texas, but also flash flooding for West and Central Texas to Oklahoma and Arkansas. Good morning, I'm Meteorologist Pew. It's November 23rd, 2025. So continuing with that upper level low pressure system that we've been following from the Southwest, that's currently now in around the New Mexico, Colorado area. So looking at 500 millibars of midwinter troposphere, looking at this trough, the most significant thing is the amount of wind speed that we see aloft on the east side. And so if we look at bulk shear from the surface all the way to six kilometers, which is pretty much the mid to upper level is we're gonna see that we have a lot, which is around 77 knots. And when you have really strong shear, that's really going to enhance those updrafts, tilt those updrafts, and prolong those storms. And we talk about shear and tilting those updrafts a lot in this channel. And basically what's happening is when you tilt an updraft, it separates that upward motion versus the downward motion from the precipitation. And because of that, it's going to keep funneling that fuel into the storms, which is why it prolongs. And that's going to be the biggest influence for today's storms. But let's talk about time frames first. New Mexico, you guys are already seeing a lot of showers and thunderstorms from last night. And that's pretty much going to continue until this evening around 7 p.m. Mountain Time. For Texas and the Southern Plains, we're gonna have two rounds of storms but it might feel like one so the first one's gonna start around 1 p.m. central time in west texas and so for the afternoon and evening around 7 to 8 p.m. central time this is going to be the most intense period of these storms the storm prediction center has issued a slight risk specifically in west texas to a little bit in central where there's a two percent chance to see an isolated or spin up tornado but a 15 percent chance to see large hail and so from 7 to 8 p.m. central time a cold front's going to pass through and it's going to initiate another round of storms from west to central texas and all these storms are going to pretty much travel eastward and so places like Northeast Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, you guys are going to see continuous heavy to moderate rain pretty much throughout the evening into the night and all the way into tomorrow, which is why the Weather Prediction Center has issued a flash flood risk, a slight risk, basically from Texas to Oklahoma and a marginal risk throughout. And so for the next 24 hours, places could see three to four inches of rainfall. Okay, so back to what's causing all this, I mentioned that there's two mechanisms. The first one is the Rocky Mountains and we're going to have downslope warming. And so essentially we're going to have westerly flow going down from the mountain. And because there's more pressure from the surface than at the top, of the mountain it's going to be compressed and so it's going to make this area hotter but also drier and at the same time we have a very broad high pressure somewhere around the ohio tennessee valley area and it's bringing a lot of gulf moisture into texas and because dry air is more denser than moist air we're going to have warm dry air coming down from the rockies but then on the opposite end we're going to have the warm moist air come from the gulf and that's going to collide crossing a dry line and that's going to basically be a front and that's what's going to initiate the first round of storms in west texas but in addition to that we're going to have a lot of low level shear with a lot of wind speed from the surface and also at 850 millibars and in addition to that we're also going to have a lot of moisture from the low levels as well and so with the shear and the moisture we're going to have a lot of storms also produce ahead of this dry line and as this upper level low pressure continues traveling eastward eventually we're going to have a surface low pressure around the international border between mexico texas and new mexico it eventually later tonight it's going to be bringing in a cold front and with that cold front interacting with the warm moist air it's going to act as another initiation for thunderstorms